Thanks for joining me again today, guys, for another episode of Biology. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of an atom. Why are we talking about atoms when we should be talking about living things? Well, biology and chemistry often come hand in hand when we talk about the beginning of life. Scientists have found all but one reason on how life began, and they think they have an answer. It's called the theory of chemical evolution. The theory basically depicts random acts of chance where energy, carbon, and a bunch of other molecules found themselves meeting in one place, mixing together and finally being able to replicate on their own from that pot of soup. At this point, scientists theorized a magical transition from chemical to biological evolution. So in this video, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of an atom that are responsible for the building blocks of chemical evolution. There are four types of atoms that make up 96% of all organisms, and those are hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Today, a living organism is composed of millions of chains of these atoms that make up who we are. But back then, these atoms bonded together in a very simple fashion, in a very simple form, like water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. History has given these atoms a chance to build stacks upon stacks of each other for countless millennia. To understand the evolution of these simple substances to living organisms found today, we have to know the molecular structure of these four atoms. We've developed a simple way to visualize what a typical atom looks like. Electrons are the smallest, lightest particles that circle what we call the atomic nucleus, located in the middle. This atomic nucleus is made up of heavier particles known as protons and neutrons. Electrons have a negative charge of minus one, while protons have a positive charge of positive one, and neutrons are obviously zero. When you have as many electrons as you do protons, the opposite charges cancel each other out, resulting in a neutral environment. You're definitely going to need to learn some terminology here. Let's start with the atomic number. Atomic number basically tells you how many protons an atom has. Now the protons are located in the nucleus sitting side by side the neutrons. This number also designates what atom we're working with. On the periodic table, you can find your atom's atomic number simply by looking at the number on the bottom left. Right above the atomic number is a number known as the mass number. The mass number is actually the combined total between protons and neutrons. Generally, you can tell here that the top number is almost always bigger than the bottom number. If it helps, just try to imagine the word mass as related to how much something weighs. Weight is usually a combined total of several different parts. Namely, in this situation, we are talking about protons and neutrons. The only exception here are the electrons. They're left out because they're actually so small that they're considered negligible. These particles are so tiny, it's actually very difficult to measure their weight. Biologists use a unit called Dalton, a measurement named by a scientist named John Dalton. Both protons and neutrons weigh exactly the same, about one Dalton each. Ever wondered how we can tell atoms apart? The answer lies in protons. If two atoms share the same number of protons, chances are they're both the same atom. But if the number of protons differ from one atom to the next, it's safe to say that we're talking about different atoms. We'll talk a little more about this in a bit. Take for example, an atom hydrogen. Hydrogen has a single proton, which makes it always a hydrogen. As long as it continues to have one proton, it will continue to be a hydrogen. If we were to add another proton to the nucleus, then we would identify it as helium. Let's talk about the neutrons that sit side by side with their brother protons. If you happen to add or remove neutrons from a stable atom's nucleus, but keep the same number of protons, you should prepare yourself for some potentially unstable atoms. We call these variations of the same atom with different number of neutrons isotopes. Remember, they still have the same number of protons, they're still the same atom, just different number of neutrons. Keep in mind that like protons, neutrons also weigh one Dalton. So if an atom were to have an unusual number of neutrons, that would play into the weight being different from the original atom as well, a different mass number. You know, the mass number where you add protons and neutrons? Just know that all versions of an isotope have the same atomic number, because if you recall, atomic numbers are the number of protons in an atom, and again, with an isotope, only the neutron count 
is changed. Take for example all the possible isotopes of a carbon atom. Normally a carbon atom would have about six protons and six neutrons. But if you add a seventh or even eighth neutron to the atom, this is still going to be a carbon. Obviously though, the mass number has changed because the addition of one neutron and no charges. The addition of one neutron Obviously though, the mass number has changed because the addition of one neutron adds an extra Dalton to the weight. Another term you should understand is the atomic weight. The atomic weight is actually the calculated average of all masses of isotopes found to be stable in nature. Don't get atomic weight confused with mass number. They are different. Remember, mass number is the combined weight of both protons and neutrons in the most commonly found version of that particular atom. Atomic weight weight is the average of all different isotopes of that atom. For atomic weight, you'd have to find all the weights of each isotope of a single atom and average it out. Take for example, carbon. You and I both know it as carbon-12, meaning that it has 6 protons, and as a result, 12 minus 6 would be 6 neutrons. But what if I told you there is an unstable radioactive carbon-14? In actuality, this version of carbon actually exists in significant quantities in nature. How is this possible? Remember the number of protons doesn't change when it's an isotope. If it did, then we'd be looking at another atom. No, what accounts for the additional two in atomic mass is the number of neutrons, which shouldn't be surprising. Those extra two are the extra two neutrons found within the nucleus, and thus, in carbon-14, we have six protons and eight neutrons. This version of carbon is an unstable radioactive isotope of carbon. It'll eventually decay, but what happens in this process is that neutrons begin to gain a positive charge, turning them into protons. Now you can guess what would happen if we changed the number of protons to an atom. I've said it before, it becomes a new atom. As one of carbon-14's neutron changes into a proton, we start to see this atom turn into a 7-proton atom. If you look at the periodic table, you'll see that nitrogen has 7 protons. And guess what? That's now what this atom is, a nitrogen. Here, nitrogen is known as nitrogen-14, since there are now 7 protons and not 8 neutrons, but 7 neutrons, because one had moved to team proton. Let's end it here, and we'll start back up again real soon. I'm glad you decided to stay until the end. If you have any questions, let me know, comment below, and as always, like, subscribe, and share.